today we're going to be making a really good homemade lasagna. I love to use the oven ready noodles just because it saves me a lot of time and hassle. I have a giant jar of sauce because we love to have a lot of sauce. I don't like dry lasagna. And then I usually use the grated Parmesan, but I was almost out, so I'm going to use up the rest of the shredded Parmesan that I had. So either way, it doesn't make any difference really. Um, and then from my experience, the best thing to do when you're using a ready lasagna is making sure that you are following the directions on the box. All of them, and depending on what brands you buy, are different on the temperatures and whether or not you need water in your sauce or not because that will help cook the noodles. So I am just preheated my oven to what the directions on the box said. And then I'm going to cook up some hamburger to throw in my sauce. So I have a big 9 by 13, I think it is, pan that I'm going to do with meat sauce. And then I'm going to do a smaller pan with no meat sauce because Giselle, we all know, doesn't like hamburger. So I'm going to make her her own special pan. I don't usually do this, but for filming purposes, I am going to go ahead and make the extra pan um, without the meat sauce in it just so you guys can see both so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook up my hamburger I only cook it about halfway through and then I squeeze in my minced garlic I probably used about a tablespoon and a half and I have like a little over a pound of hamburger in here and then I'm just gonna finish cooking it up and draining it just a little side note, I tried the little hack that I see everybody do with draining my hamburger and putting the paper towel in there, and in my opinion, it was a total pain in the butt. I would much rather just drain my hamburger in the sink. <laughs> what I do is I just run the hot water the whole time so that it doesn't, you know, harden up inside the garbage disposal area. And then I actually turned the garbage disposal on, but just my preference. I know it's not good for your garbage disposal and your pipes and all that. So what I'm going to do next is I am going to dump about three quarters of this jar into the meat sauce pan. And then I'm going to pull out another pan and put the rest of that inside there. And I'm just going to heat it up on the stove a little bit. So on the box directions, it does say that you want to put in a half a cup of water with your sauce mixture. So that's what I'm going to do um, in this meat pan. I'm going to put in the half a cup of water and I'm going to stir it in there really good and put the temperature down to low just to kind of simmer it. And then in the other pan as well, I'm just going to dump in the rest of the sauce. I'm going to put in the half a cup of water in that one also since they are two separate pans. And I usually make two 9 by 13 sizes, but unfortunately my other pan broke. So that's why I'm just using the smaller casserole dish. But if you have two of the 9 by 13s, this will be plenty of sauce for both of them. So I just use a little bit more of the sauce and the meat mixture just because the meat absorbs it a lot but you would have plenty of sauce to do two 9 by 13 pans depending on the size of your family and so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to jump into making the filling while this is just kind of simmering on the stove so what you're going to need is a big mixing bowl uh, you're going to dump in all of your ricotta mixture and if you like cottage cheese in yours, you could do half ricotta, half cottage cheese, all cottage cheese. It's just your preference, but we love the ricotta. I used to make it with cottage cheese, but I switched over and I haven't gone back since. Um, and then I did forget to mention you do need an egg. It really does make a difference with the filling and whipping it up. 
um, to expand it and make it super creamy. Um, but an egg isn't required. If you don't have one, it's absolutely okay. It's not going to do make or break your lasagna. It's just my preference. Um, and then dumping in the rest of my Parmesan cheese that I had, I tend to use about a quarter of Parmesan cheese, whether it's grated or shredded. It doesn't make a difference. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I usually put in about a half a cup of mozzarella inside the mixture also. But unfortunately, my other bag, I guess I must have pulled a random one from the store because somehow it expired two months ago. I don't know how I missed that, but <laughs> so if you have two bags of mozzarella, I would dump in half a cup to a cup. Um, I usually use about half a bag, honestly, so a cup. But that's what I had to work with and this is the point too where if you want to throw in Italian seasoning you would do that now you would put it in this mixture mix it around you probably only need about a tablespoon of it in my opinion but this is honestly the first time ever that I made my lasagna without the Italian seasoning added in there and it came out phenomenal still so my family actually prefer for preferred it this way so, what we're going to do now is we're going to make up our dishes. So, you want to spread, and again, I do not measure anything hardly. <laughs> I just kind of go with the flow. So, like I said, we love a lot of sauce and a lot of filling inside our lasagnas. I think that's what makes the difference and why everybody loves mine so much because I don't measure anything. So I'm going to put a heaping amount, I'm just going to call it a heaping amount. I put a heaping amount of sauce in the bottom of my pan. I forgot to spray my pan with, with cooking spray, but honestly, it didn't even matter because the sauce is in the bottom of your pan that keeps your noodles from sticking anyways. So go ahead and spread in a layer of sauce on the bottom of these pans. And then you're just going to layer your lasagna noodles um, starting from one end and then I like to overlap them a little bit so that just helps when you go to serve the lasagna that it doesn't fall apart too much and you guys I don't know why I was struggling so much to get these damn noodles to break every time I went to go break them for the smaller casserole dish they were just shattering so don't mind that hot mess of a pan but it all ends up coming out perfectly fine so if you struggle or if you are struggling with getting your noodles to break down that's okay just do like me and layer as best that you can and so with the filling on this first layer uh, you want to use about a third of what you have and you're just going to throw in spoonfuls <laughs> and spread that out as even as you can just across the whole pan and then we're going to layer another layer of sauce on top of that which you will use about half of your sauce or a little less than half of your sauce so the deal with the sauce is is when you are adding it to your layers you definitely want to make sure that you have enough sauce that it's going to come over the sides so I tend to spread it all around or dump it all around the edges too and then make sure I take my spoon and I spread it down the edges because if you don't and you leave any parts of your noodles without sauce they tend to not cook properly and actually tend to burn and they get really hard so you want to make sure you're spooning your sauce down on them those edges and so what we will do next after this step is we will get our lasagna noodles and we will add a whole other layer to this so when I do my second layer of noodles I like to start on the other end of the pan on the opposite end so I'm alternating with each layer again this helps with serving 
so when you go in to cut into your lasagna it doesn't fall apart I've never had my lasagna fall apart because of the way that I do it so I recommend you doing it this way and again the noodles were breaking down terribly for that smaller casserole dish so I am just doing what I can but I'm still working with that same direction though and now once we get our second layer of noodles laid down you're going to spoon more of that ricotta mixture on top again and just use pretty good amounts um, you're going to probably use about half of what's left or most of what's left honestly because in these pans I've only been able to do three layers of noodles anything more than that then it's gonna boil over inside your oven so honestly I'm sorry to take back what I said a minute ago but I do half my ricotta mixture on the first layer and then the last half on this second layer I don't personally usually add ricotta on the top layer um, unless there's a noodle on top of it and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second but and again too I guess my measurements are a little off at least with splitting this up when I'm making my pans because the fact of my other one breaking so I'm used to making two large pans so <laughs> That's why my mixture is a little off and I actually end up putting some ricotta mixture on the very top layer just because I had a little bit left over. I don't like to waste anything so I use up every bit of what I have. And again you guys, I'm sorry for going on a little rant with the ricotta and all of that but it makes absolutely no difference in the world whether you put ricotta on your top layer or not <laughs> that's just my personal preference and how I'm used to doing it um, just for presentation purposes and just because I am weird sometimes like that and tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to cooking not that I'm a chef or anything like that but anyways back to what we're doing um, so now like I said before, this is the top and final layer of sauce, so this is the most important part. This part right here, if you do not have enough sauce to cover this top layer, then you run into issues with it burning and not cooking right. So it is very important that you do leave enough sauce that you're able to get again a lot of it to go off the edges down the edges and the sides of your pan so I like to put most of it in the middle and then I will spread it out so next you will put on your aluminum foil and in this particular recipe or excuse me on this particular direction um, it did say to cover it really tightly, so I bought a really good heavy-duty aluminum foil. And now what we're going to do is we are going to pop these into the oven and per the box directions, and again, you want to follow your box of noodles. If you're using oven-ready noodles, you want to follow those exact. Every recipe is going to be different when it comes to the cooking times and the temperatures. So for mine, I'm going to cook it for 50 minutes. Once the 50 minutes is up, then I'm going to take it out of the oven because it did say that you want to uncover it. Mine does. It says you'll want to uncover it for 10 minutes and put it back in the oven. And at this point is when I will throw on my mozzarella cheese. I do not put it on the first round of it going in the oven. And make sure when you guys are taking off your aluminum foil that you're very careful. I know I have been doing this for so many years now. I don't use a fork or anything. I just burn myself. <laughs> so maybe don't recommend that. Maybe use a fork or something just to get that corner up. But aluminum foil, it doesn't tend to get too hot, or at least on the edges. 
it's not hot that's why you can see me touching it <laughs> but I'm gonna get those off and then I'm gonna be popping it back in the oven again for another 10 minutes to finish cooking those noodles and you'll see I forgot to throw on my mozzarella cheese so I'm gonna end up opening up the oven and putting that on there and just for a second you guys I just wanted to take a moment and thank each and every one of you that take the time to watch my videos and all of my subscribers that I have I greatly appreciate you that helps me tremendously and if you haven't subscribed already please make sure you do that way you do not miss any of my content I plan to do a lot more of these what's for dinner kind of um, videos for you or however everybody is calling it anymore <laughs> I would like to do some more cooking videos for you so you got some meal ideas for your large families this feeds so much um, we honestly were a family of seven we honestly only had the little pan left um, we do eat a lot of this but it goes a long way though too so and it also makes for really great leftovers this reheats very good so I tend to um, separate them out in containers and I'll put them in my husband's lunch box um, so he can eat it throughout the week. Not that I give it to him every day because too much of anything, you get tired of it. <laughs> but um, I do sit it with him a couple times at least through the week and then me and the kids eat it, eat on it what's left um, throughout the week too. So it's definitely a great make-ahead kind of meal also. And two, if you wanted to, you could make it all up, uh, put it all together, and pop it in the fridge and bake it another day. And there you have it. There is my homemade lasagna. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on my next one.